a couple of things that drive investments in solar towers. Uh, one is the cost of oil. The other thing, of course, is government policy. Now with oil prices at record highs and environmental issues burning in the public's consciousness, interest in the Manzanares model has reached critical mass. An Australian firm called Enviromission plans to take a new tower to unprecedented heights. It will be one of the largest structures, if not the largest structure on the face of the earth. The steel reinforced concrete tower will rise 2,500 feet above the earth. That's nearly half a mile and twice the height of the Empire State Building. Its base will be 430 feet in diameter, wide enough to provide a firm anchor during high winds. The glass and polymer canopy will span three miles, gently sloping from a height of six feet at the perimeter to 100 feet at the tower. There, 32 jet-sized turbines will be waiting to take the hot air and turn it into electricity. The tower promises year-round energy. Greenhouses still operate in winter, so they still collect warm air. You still create a temperature differential. You may not have the huge output you have in summer, but you will certainly have a very substantial output. Enviromission believes their tower will light up the power grid with an astounding 200 megawatts. Even if the tower runs at 80% capacity, that's enough power to fuel half a million households. Enviromission has already purchased a 20,000 acre site between Melbourne and Sydney. It'll be an engineering marvel and obviously a renewable energy icon. And it will be expensive. Estimated cost to build the tower is $700 million. It's a hefty price, but one that would eventually pay for itself. It will be, we believe, competitive in output with coal, but it is more expensive to build but uh, it costs nothing to run. With investment capital rushing toward green machines, that 700 million looks attainable. Jetson-style transport mod, 620 solar towers, the size of Enviromission's design. Of those, California would need six